Oh no, not yet. What have they done? Okay, so my first problem with this episode is Obi-Wan isn't Obi-Waning. Case in point, in the previous episode, he uses the force to save Leia when she falls from the, loo from the rooftop. So he's got the magic back. Yet, when he's sitting on the back of that hover truck with the stormtroopers and they're having that terrible conversation, instead of kind of have to have to wait, you know, cheat his way out of the story and have Leia save him, he could have just used like the, the Jedi mind trick. I mean, they're stormtroopers after all. We all love the Jedi mind trick. It's a crowd pleaser. Then there's the laser gate inspection. For some reason, he doesn't use the lightsaber to just slice these dudes up. Like, he's fighting with his fist and blaster. So if you're coordinated enough to dodge blaster fires, punch stormtroopers, and use precision to shoot a stormtrooper in the chest, uh, I'm pretty sure you can use the lightsaber. The best part of this episode so far is the stormtrooper getting sliced in half uh, by that laser gate. More of that, please. And I do want to talk about the Force for a moment. I think this is the first time I've ever heard a character talk about what the Force feels like. And it was awesome. Like, I would genuinely love to hear more about what it feels like to use the Force. To what it feels like to be suffused with, like, you know, the living essence of the universe flowing through you got to be pretty cool right I'd also like to see or learn more about what it's like uh, to use the dark side of the force although I guess I can kind of imagine that and I like it this brings me to the dumbest part of the episode the inquisitors the inquisitors are inquisitoring and that needs to stop. I was giving them all the benefit of the doubt for the first two episodes, but things have kind of changed in episode three. I don't care about these bozos at all. Why? Because Vader is here now. And while I love seeing Vader, we're gonna talk a lot about Vader. I love seeing Vader. I think this is some clumsy uh, writing from the writing team and I'm n and like I'm not sure this is the direction they should take this story see the danger with the Vader is he's such an amazing and overwhelming force that whatever scene or story you put him in he's going to totally take over see just like he's done with this section it was supposed to be about it was supposed to be about inquisitors but it's actually now about Vader Anyways, I'm hoping Obi-Wan does to the Inquisitors what Vader did to Rebels in, at the end of Rogue One. Okay, so my biggest problem with Episode 3 is that Vader isn't Vadering. He does force drag that person straight, on, straight across the ground and he chokes those people and throws them against the wall. That's like, that's Vadering, but that's like Vadering light. But even before we get to that, like Vader's in fucking Mordor. Now, I know there's some lore about why he's there, but the writing team for this story hasn't really told me why he's spending so much time there. And if he is spending time there, I'm pretty sure they're doing more constructive things than staring poetically out the window like he's in like a fucking novel. This is Vader. Vader's place is space. He's hunting Jedi. He's choking in subordinates to make sure they stay in check and to make sure he stays sharp on random spaceships. He's trying to figure out how to resurrect Padme. I don't think he's a guy who lets go of things too easily. He's learning some new dark side of the force tricks. You know, Vadering. And now again, I, like many Star Wars fans, love to see Vader. And I'm super excited and happy that he showed up in episode three. However, as I said previously, 
It's not without significant risk. When we see Vader and Obi-Wan face off in A New Hope, it seems like it's been a very long time since the two of those have crossed paths. And when you bring him in at this moment, you jeopardize or endanger the gravity of that scene of these of the of the student and the master two incredibly powerful force users coming face to face to settle old scores the other risk here is that the more you see a vader the more familiar he becomes and you start to put the legend of vader like the monster of vader at risk he risks becoming a familiar character, a piece of content versus a piece of epic myth. So again, I really wanna stress here, I love Vader. I actually hope they give Vader a series. I'm gonna talk about that in a separate video, but I love Vader. I love these in this episode, but again, this writing team just might not be up to the task of handling the epic myth of Vader. I thought his lines were actually super weak and I'm just gonna use one example. When Obi-Wan is staring at him in total awe and disbelief of, you know, oh my God, look at this monster before me. This guy used to be a human being and he kind of mutters, you know, what have you become? And then Vader's reply is, I am what you made me. That's not what Vader would say. We're talking about one of the most ambitious Jedis ever who essentially sold his soul to achieve, to achieve or obtain unheard of power. He would say something like, I've become more powerful than all the Jedi combined. Or he'd at least say something about, you don't know the power of the dark side of the force. And then he would do some Vadering on Obi-Wan's fucking face. I mean, again, I'm pretty sure as a bad guy of incredible power, if you came face to face with the hero who sliced off all your limbs and left you to burn on a planet of lava, the first thing you would, you would do is not start up a conversation with him. Asterisk, I know. I know what happened in A New Hope, but it's been a very long time there. This is 10 years. 10 years for this guy probably passes like that. I see Obi-Wan as Vader. I'm gonna like, that's a great opportunity for like a saber throw, a force choke, or a force choke and a saber throw. Like I'm not just gonna kind of casually uh, wait for this guy to strike up a conversation. And of course, I know like Vader has played cat and mouse with before because of his immense skill and his immense power but i think this is a different situation uh the anger is still there it's still hot and i think vader would be in destroy mode not in oh hey i'm gonna i'm gonna play cat and mouse uh with a guy who nearly killed me so i think it was a cheap comment it didn't make any sense for this character and i hope you know that the writing team kind of finds finds their voice with Vader and uh, finds how how he would really behave and operate in this world for the later part for these next three episodes. Then there's the lightsaber skirmish. I have really mixed feelings about this as well. I know I know what's going on here, right? You know, it's it's obviously a demonstration of Vader's sort of immense power, like he's grown in power while Obi-Wan's uh, use of the force are, and his abilities have clearly been diminished across this time in exile. So of course, Vader has been shown to play like a cat and mouse game or kind of like play with his prey for a little bit before like slaughtering them. Uh, but I, I think what makes this situation different is if you're force choking your nemesis and then you drag him into the fire, one stormtrooper getting sniped isn't gonna be the reason like you lose focus and let this guy scamper away. Like Vader, again, Vader will play 
play with the person who he's gonna slaughter, but when he, when he has the kill shot, or when he thinks he has the kill shot, he takes it. Maybe, maybe, after all the years and what Obi-Wan did to him, he's a little bit hesitant to go in for the kill. That's a big maybe. Um, I think, you know, it's just, again, it's really kind of like out of step with character, with the character of Vader. He's got Obi-Wan, he's drug him into the fire. All he has to do now is finish the job. I think it's really just an uncomfortable misstep to kind of put those two in that situation where the most plausible outcome, considering the story's logic, is that Vader would kill him. The upside of this tussle, of course, you know, is that this is sort of like the mid-season kind of standoff climax, if you want to call it that. But the upside of this tussle is that there should be a much more engaging and exciting saber duel between Obi-Wan and Vader, probably in episode five or six. It'd be great if they were in four, five, and six. I'll take that. All in all, where I stand with this series now is I actually think it might have been better as a movie. <laughs> but uh, hey, we'll see where it goes.